Chapter 7 discusses long-run and short-run concerns, growth, productivity, unemployment, and inflation. You have five minutes to read summary, pages 135 to 136, and then, there will be a short quiz. The summer of 1999 was a great time for new college graduates to find jobs. The economy was strong and unemployment low. At other times, however, job prospects for recent graduates are much bleaker. Why is that? What are some of the differences between a strong and a weak economy? 2. How can you tell if the job market is strong or not? If you don't have a job, does that mean you're counted as unemployed? Three. Perhaps you've heard that an unemployment rate of 3.5% is considered to be very low, yet it means millions of people are out of work. Why is some unemployment inevitable? Four. There are different reasons people are out of work. Does that mean there are different kinds of unemployment? Are some types of unemployment worse than are others? Five. You may have experienced some of the hardships stemming from you or one of your family members losing a job. Are there any additional costs experienced by the economy when unemployment increases? In addition to the personal costs of unemployment, the economy loses the output from unemployed workers. In addition, there are social costs, such as increases in the number of welfare recipients. If prices rise faster than incomes, people are worse off. Inflation is an increase in the overall price level in the economy. Inflation is measured in terms of the rate of change in a price index, such as the CPI and PPI. Inflation has remained low in the United States in recent years. People whose incomes rise at a slower rate than prices lose from inflation. In addition, people who underestimate inflation tend to suffer from inflation. Lenders tend to lose and borrowers tend to gain from unexpected inflation. Economists have debated the seriousness of the costs of inflation for decades. But whatever the real economic costs of inflation, people do not like it, and so political leaders have vigorously pursued policies designed to stop inflation, even at the cost of inducing a recession. An ideal economy is one in which there is rapid growth of output per worker, low unemployment, and low inflation. The average growth rate of output in the economy since 1900 has been about 3.4% per year. An area of economics called growth theory is concerned with the question of what determines this rate. There are a number of ways to increase output. An economy can add more workers, add more machines, Increase the length of the work week. Increase the quality of the workers. Increase the quality of the machines. Output per worker hour is called labor productivity. For the 1952 to 2000 period, labor productivity exhibits an upward trend and Fairly sizable fluctuations around that trend. The growth rate was much higher in the 1950s and 1960s than it has been since the early 1970s.
graph shows output per worker hour. Productivity, 1952 to 2003. Part of the reason for the upward trend in productivity is an increase in the amount of capital per worker. With more capital per worker, more output can be produced per year. The other reason productivity has increased is that the quality of labor and capital has been increasing. Graph shows capital per worker grew until about 1980 and then leveled off. A harder question to answer is why has productivity grown more slowly since the early 1970s? The growth of the Internet, which brings about an increase in the quality of capital, should lead to a new age of productivity growth. The business cycle describes the periodic ups and downs in the economy, or deviations of output and employment away from the long-run trend. A recession is roughly a period in which real GDP declines for at least two consecutive quarters. It is marked by falling output and rising unemployment. A depression is a prolonged and deep recession. The precise definitions of prolonged and deep are debatable. Capacity utilization rates, which show the percentage of factory capacity being used in production, are one indicator of a recession. Table shows real GDP and unemployment rates, 1929 to 1933 and 1980 to 1982. An unemployed person is a person 16 years old or older who 1. is not working 2. is available for work and 3. has made specific efforts to find work during the previous four weeks. A person who is not looking for work, either because he or she does not want a job or has given up looking, is not in the labor force. Defining and Measuring Unemployment Computing the Unemployment Rate for the Month of July 2003 Labor Force, 141.39 million Employed, 133.47 million Unemployed, 7.92 million Table shows employed, unemployed, and the labor force, 1953 to 2002. Unemployment rates for different demographic groups. Regional differences in unemployment. The discouraged worker effect lowers the unemployment rate. Discouraged workers are people who want to work but cannot find jobs. They grow discouraged and stop looking for work, thus dropping out of the ranks of the unemployed and the labor force. Table shows the duration of unemployment. Frictional unemployment is the portion of unemployment that is due to the normal working of the labor market, used to denote short-run jobs slash skill matching problems.
Structural unemployment is the portion of unemployment that is due to changes in the structure of the economy that result in a significant loss of jobs in certain industries. Cyclical unemployment is the increase in unemployment that occurs during recessions and depressions. The natural rate of unemployment is the unemployment that occurs as a normal part of the functioning of the economy. Sometimes taken as the sum of frictional unemployment and structural unemployment. Recessions may help to reduce inflation. Some argue that recessions may increase efficiency by driving the least efficient firms out of business and by forcing surviving firms to trim waste and manage their resources better. Also, a recession leads to a decrease in the demand for imports, which improves a nation's balance of payments. Two serious inflationary periods since 1970. Inflation is an increase in the overall price level. Deflation is a decrease in the overall price level. Sustained inflation is an increase in the overall price level that continues over a significant period. Inflation and the business cycle. Price indexes are used to measure overall price levels. The price index that pertains to all goods and services in the economy is the GDP price index. The consumer price index, CPI is a price index computed each month by the Bureau of Labor Statistics using a bundle that is meant to represent the market basket purchased monthly by the typical urban consumer. Price indexes are used to measure overall price levels. The price index that pertains to all goods and services in the economy is the GDP price index. The Consumer Price Index, CPI, is a price index computed each month by the Bureau of Labor Statistics using a bundle that is meant to represent the market basket purchased monthly by the typical urban consumer. Composition of Price Indexes The Consumer Price Index, CPI, since 1950. Other popular price indexes are producer price indexes, PPIs, which measure price changes for products at all stages in the production process. The three main categories are Finished Goods intermediate materials, and crude materials. People's income increases during inflations, when most prices, including input prices, tend to rise together. Inflation changes the distribution of income. People living on fixed incomes are particularly hurt by inflation. The benefits received by many retired workers, including Social Security, are fully indexed to inflation. When prices rise, benefits rise. The poor have not fared so well. Welfare benefits are not indexed and have not kept pace with inflation.
Unanticipated inflation and inflation that takes people by surprise can hurt creditors. Inflation that is higher than expected benefits debtors, inflation that is lower than expected benefits creditors. The real interest rate is the difference between the interest rate on a loan and the inflation rate. Inflation creates administrative costs and inefficiencies. Without inflation, time could be used more efficiently. The opportunity cost of holding cash is high during inflations. People therefore hold less cash and need to stop at the bank more often. People are not fully informed about price changes and may make mistakes that lead to a misallocation of resources. Some people consider inflation to be our public enemy number one. Elected leaders have vigorously pursued policies designed to stop inflation. The recessions of 1974 to 1975 and 1980 to 1982 were the price we had to pay to stop inflation. Stopping inflation is costly. 